Good morning. On today's agenda is uh, discussing some some deeper stuff here. I want to talk about just kind of like life and progressing and growth and um, you know dealing with some of the realities of you know whatever your situation is. Some things you can do to kind of maybe compensate for that. Wow, that person, anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, but anyway, so, <clears throat> first things first. Um, all right, so when I started this channel, I was a, a younger man. Actually, well, arguably, I wasn't even a man. I was like 16 years old. Um, it was right after I could drive. I had this bike since then. Um, so I was like 16 and tail into high school, obviously, because of that. And, figuring out where I wanted to go to college, what I wanted to do with the rest of my life, and all that kind of stuff. So, if you listen very closely throughout my years of videos, you will hear that, uh, you know, little tidbits here and there about, you know, going to college and high school and, you know, then my jobs and stuff like that. Although, when I started working is when the channel kind of tanked, only because I uh, stopped rock doing here brother technically on the wrong side of the road but that's okay um, when I stopped uh, working on the channel when I started working at my job not because I didn't have less as much time or anything just because I wasn't commuting on the bike anymore because I had a very busy highway commute and I just wasn't commuting on the bike for a variety of reasons so anyway you know that's neither here nor there at this point um, so <clears throat> I had this very distinct progression, right? Finish high school with good grades, go to college, finish college with you know good grades, and get a get a good first uh, first time job, and then okay, I got the first job, really bust butt to get into my second job, and and you know get the career moving. So um, my my field of study is uh, is because uh, mechanical engineering and. Now I was a manufacturing engineer, kind of some quality engineering as well in my last uh, company. So that's kind of the line of work I'm in. Um, and uh, they are fields, you know, they are fields with uh, good growth potential, I mean great growth potential. But, and this is with any job, but especially with engineering, the resistance to bullshit is very low. You have to be pretty good at what you do or people notice and you will not move up. You may not necessarily get fired. You just won't move up. So, you know, or get hired at more premium companies, right? So, it required a fair amount of effort. I mean, I, you know, I had to really earn my, my stake. So now, 11 years later, give or take from the start of this channel, um, I'm, uh, you know, got a, my second job. Uh, well, really my third, but anyway. My third job and I'm uh, pretty well established there you know making decent money the whole nine yards so the question kind of then becomes now is it's like what's next so something that I've always struggled with is I'm a very motivated person so that's never really been an issue like I'm good at if I have a task I'm good at grinding it out getting it done moving on to the next thing you know, keeping things the way they need to go. The only thing that I'm a little worse about is making strong, definitive decisions on certain larger, you know, greater topics and issues. Um, you know, that pertain directly to my personal life. When the stakes are, you know, a little high. And not horribly so, but enough that if left to my own devices, I definitely can slow my own progress due to my lack of strong decision making. So that's definitely something that'll get you if you're not careful. So you gotta identify those weaknesses that you inherently have. And for some people it's the opposite, right? They'll, they'll make a decision too fast and they wind up doing dumb stuff because of it and, and hurting themselves, their progress that way. So, uh, you know, that's, that's one thing. Um, so, somebody was doing some like burnouts there. Anyway, uh, so these are the things you battle with, you know, as a human being, right? You know, you've got different strengths and weaknesses. But 
how you can utilize those things, your weaknesses as strengths, and at least neutralize them, if nothing else, um, you know, is, is truly how you progress, right? So, I've been working on that as any as any good person would. Um, you know, I don't necessarily have all the answers, but uh, you know, various things that I've uh, techniques that I've found to help are uh, so. First off. Um, Big thing for me is just getting getting to a a point in your life of consistent improvement and learning. So, luckily within my job, I'm forced to learn and learn and learn. So that's great. But on a personal life, I want to keep learning as well. So a couple of things that I've done, right? I have this motorcycle automotive hobby. And over the years, it's gone from motorcycles to cars and pickup trucks and whatever. So I have this hobby that gives me the ability to have a directionality of what I'm trying to learn, um, you know, at least in that facet. So, yeah, I mean, just learning more about mechanical repair. I did some body work, like all these different things, just getting better and better and better at the automotive hobby. Um, just as a way to keep advancing and growing and learning, getting new knowledge, and you might be able to make money from that knowledge someday. Um, on a more personalized, individual level, uh, just, I really started a couple couple years ago, now, about a year and a half ago maybe now, 2020 I guess, started reading books, so that's a big one to me. And, and, not, and, and there's nothing wrong with reading fiction, but I'm talking non-fiction, like books that you will really, really, really take something away from and have a usable impact in your life. So, um, a lot of different books that I've read, all the books that I read actually, are just things that can somehow make me more capable at doing my job and honestly more important to me, being better in my personal life, a better friend, better son, uh, you know, eventually a better boyfriend and maybe husband, right? Like, um, that's, the, that's really the main goal for me. I, 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 I definitely put, I'm the type of person who puts a strong emphasis on their career, but my career is not God either. You know, there, there's nothing I wouldn't want more for myself than, you know, waking up at 40 years old and just having nothing but my career to show for it. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just not what I personally want. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. There's nothing, if that's your thing, that's not what I want. So, I've noticed as I've gone further in my career, it is very, very easy to use the excuse of, eh, I'd like to do that, but I don't have time for that, right? The, I, I've noticed, at least with me, now not, don't get me wrong, right? There are things you truly don't have time for. I'm not saying that. But there are relatively small things that you will use that excuse for. And, and, and at that point, it becomes just that. It becomes an excuse, not a reason, right? Not an actual reason for something. And, uh, and that's not good because, man, when you, when you do the things that break you out of your comfort zone, even if that comfort zone is a comfort zone of time, that is a comfort zone in and of itself. The level of growth, I, I so in 2020, I, uh, I, was, I had a case of the COVID crazies mentally <laughs> and I was like I always wanted to I always had this dream right this pipe dream I never had time for to paint my truck uh, you see it on the channel look it's, it's still kicking <laughs> but to paint it's an 05 silver you know nobody else in their right mind most people would take it to a junkyard and buy a new one but nope I wanted to like restore it so uh, I just never did time right well, 2020 rolls around, the pain had gotten just bad enough that I was really, really getting frustrated with even just looking at it and driving it, because it was just, just looking bad, um, you know, looking rough, and uh, so I said to myself, I'm like, you know what, the world is shut down, I am forced, due to the reality of world events, not to be able to go out and do certain things, so I'm going to use that added time that I now just got for free. And, and try to put it to good use. So I did a boatload of research, ordered the paint products, um, got everything shipped in. In the meantime, I was doing the prep work on the truck. And honestly, it was terrifying. I mean, I'd never done, I painted a tailgate for the truck. So I knew that I could do it, kinda. 
but painting a tailgate off the truck while you still have your current tailgate, if you really mess it up, is a lot different than stripping the paint on the actual vehicle that you need to drive, you know, semi-daily. I had the car and the bike, but, you know, semi-daily driver here by, by this point, and, uh, you know, attempting to fully repaint it. So, I did it though. I, uh, after all the research and trial and a little bit of trial and error, I did painted the roof first, which if you look at the roof of that truck, it's nothing to write home about, but I got my skills up by the time I got to all the rest of the important body panels. Um, and it came out pretty okay. I am I'm more than satisfied with it. I think if I had a little bit more time, um, uh, I definitely could have done an even better job. But you know, this is all part of the process, right? The first time, first time for everything. So uh, you know, we did good. But uh, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with that. But my point is. That was a time, that was a, a one month time, it took me nights and weekends, of immense personal growth, right? The, the, the relative risk of sanding your truck all the way down and painting it, from a like, health and safety perspective, yeah, I mean, like, you're not going to die if the paint job comes out crappy, but it's a like, big financial risk, you know, you have to have somebody fix it, or either buy a new truck, or just deal with the fact that it's ugly. You know, so there's like a pretty big implication from that perspective. And uh, it was a lot of work, man. I, I was up till 3 a.m. some nights, you know, and I'd turn around and wake up again at 7, 8 o'clock and get back out there. So, you know, it was a, it's a big commitment. And that was a big decision. And that was a, a formative thing to do. Um, as kind of silly as it is on a grand scale, it's a, it's a microcosm of life. So, uh, you know, that's a really cool thing about the car hobby in general is there's a lot of bigger ticket things you can learn how to do and it's it can be incredibly rewarding if you figure it out. Um, you can also make some incredibly big mistakes if you don't. So just make sure you don't bite off too too much more than you think you should. But, uh, but yeah, so that, that's you know something that I've learned and uh, I try to practice. You know it's tough. I think the older you get, the older you get you become a little bit more conservative decision making right you have more to lose you have more financial wealth you have maybe some more assets uh, you have some more emotional connections whether that's family friends girlfriend boyfriend husband whatever so you know that, but you have to balance that with making sure that you don't not just do stuff you don't want to just stop doing things because there's too much to lose because then you just do nothing and that's actually more of a loss sometimes than, than whatever it is you think you're going to lose by doing the thing you know it, inaction is and this is something I'm personally learning and trying to realize but inaction is incredibly dangerous for your personal mental health and growth and development and all that like like yeah, that, that you get you most decisions in life you can reverse. All right, you you, you you take a job, you take your quote dream job, and you know ten states away. Well, you find out three months later, holy crap, this actually sucks. I don't even like this. What have I just done? I gave up this great job. Well, guess what? Most of the time, not always, most of the time, if you left off on a good foot, you could probably call your previous employer. And, and move right back into that job or find another job locally to where your original area that you like or find a job in the new area that you like like there are things you can do to mitigate a, a decision made a, you know a wrong decision right there is nothing you can do to that's a cool piece of equipment there's nothing you can do to mitigate indecision and, 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 and I want to point something out. This is something I struggle with big time. So I'm not preaching here. I'm, this, this is preaching to myself as much as it is anybody listening. It is indecision will, will stall your life and it will hurt your progress um, more than a wrong decision will. Within reason, guys, you know, yeah, you go around murdering people, that's going to definitely stall your life progression. But I'm going to let you guys go. This video is getting long and I'm rambling. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more content. Um, as part of that decision making, I've made a decision to keep this channel going. Hell or high water.
So anyway, ride safe, keep the shiny side up, the rubber side down, and uh, peace out guys. Bye.